in the last class we shared a world of shaders now let's get enlightened on lighting here is an example of 3d lighting in a game scene you can see the ambient light and some la local light sources shadows of pillars some fog and some blurred buildings at the far end of the scene Typically, the color of the object that you see is defined by laws of reflection of light on the object. We all have gone through the basic law of reflection in our physics objects classes at school regarding the incident ray, reflected ray, and the angle they cast with respect to the normal to the reflecting subject uh, surface. This law of reflection is true for a perfect mirror like reflecting surface. But for usual objects, notice that there are multiple reflected rays for an incident ray, and all reflected rays are not reflected in the same direction. This causes the phenomenon of scattering. Here, the reflecting rays are scattered in a range of directions around the typical mirror reflecting direction. Lighting comes in different forms ambient lighting or the light around you. Usually, in the form of sunlight, moonlight, or light coming from a distant source. As you see here, ambient lighting typically gives a constant color to the object. Then there is diffuse lighting, the typical lighting you see in a matte surface or wooden or mosaic surface. When more portion of an object faces a light source, the brighter it becomes. So the directional impact of light on the object can be attributed to diffuse lighting. Then we have specular lighting, as in uh, you may have noticed a bright spot on a metallic surface or a glossy object, or let's say on a porcelain cup or plate. So the reflected light in specular lighting is more towards the actual color of the light than the color of the object. The overall lighting can be expressed as a combined effect of all these types of lighting. We can see more about these three types of lighting and their combined effect in the up upcoming sessions. There are various light sources you encounter on a daily basis. Let's take the case of directional light source. When the light source is far away from the object on which the light falls, the light rays are almost parallel to each other and it feels as if they're coming from the same direction, irrespective of the location of the viewer. Sunlight is a perfect example of directional light. A point light illuminates in all directions and is placed at given location in the 3D scene. Think of the Edison light bulbs that many of us may have at home. Although a spotlight is placed at a given location in the 3D scene, it illuminates in a specific direction. So only the objects that are falling in the direction, in its direction, are lit. A head-mounted flashlight or the light focusing a particular character in a drama theater stage are spotlights. Then there are area lights which cast directional rays from a set boundary uh, are typically rectangular or uh, circular in shape. The usual rectangular light fixtures in a corporate environment or a computer center or classrooms at most colleges are typical examples of area light source. Global illumination adds more realistic lighting to 3D scenes. In order to understand what is global illumination, let's first see what's direct and indirect illumination. As you see here, when light rays reflect from the object once before reaching the viewer's eye, it's called direct illumination. But when light rays bounce off from multiple objects before reaching the viewer's eye, it's called indirect illumination. Global illumination in 3D involves simulating both these type of effects. As you see in the images over here, different parts of this building are illuminated in different ways. Some parts are directly illuminated by sunlight, while some parts are not exposed to sunlight directly. But the parts that are not exposed to sunlight are not completely black, as you notice, and have some darker or lighter shades. This is due to indirect illumination and are good examples of global illumination. Since there are infinitely many paths possible for light to bounce from multiple objects and surfaces in the 3D scene, 
before reaching the viewer side simulating global illumination is usually not that simple in terms of computations required here the path that a light ray follows from the light source to the viewer side is called a light path we can do the simulation of light paths in two different ways we can simulate light ray emitting from a light source in a specific direction to bounce off different surfaces and see if they reach a point of, on the object without any objects obstructing the path this method is called forward tracing the second method is to simulate a light ray from the viewer side in a specific direction and trace its path backward through multiple bounces of different objects and see if the light ray reaches the light source without any objects obstructing its path this is called backward tracing in the next class we'll discuss more on the concepts of lighting